Have you been preparing for the big change coming in Honkai Star Rail version 2.0? If not, don't worry, I got you covered. Because in today's video, I'll be going over the top five teams coming in Honkai Star Rail pre 2.0. Yeah, because Sparkle, Sparkle's gonna change stuff. In my previous video, I broke down my theory on how Honkai Star Rail was evolving into a meta that closely resembled Genshin Impact's team building today. And in this video, I'm expanding on that. Before we get into the actual teams, you should keep in mind a few things. Number one, this is not exclusively based on one source of collected data like Pride Win or CN. Those are used as references, but not absolutes. With my initial theory, just clearing MOC is no longer viable for what makes it to the top. This also takes into account equipping them with what would be their most ideal gear to perform Form these team specific functions. No rainbow gear in mind. Number two, the top team's definition does not simply break down into a single hyper carry or dual DPS explanation. Hyper carry is a type of team build, yes, but it is not the team. By current hyper carry standards, that would result in main DPS plus Pela, Tingyun, and a sustain or Branya slash May. Essentially like forcing my Pikachu to defeat Lance in the Elite Four after the other five Pokemon gave him all their strength. The same is said for dual DPS and that adding a second DPS unit to the team doesn't automatically make it the team. The final thing to keep in mind is the criteria behind what I've constituted as the top five teams. Efficient, unique synergy between a core of characters. They must execute their desired functions without the need to sacrifice the kit. And lastly, they can clear MOC in three cycles or less on average. With all that out of the way, let's jump into my top five teams. Wait, 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 wait. What kind of host would I be if I didn't let my special guests in introduce their honorable mentions. Hey guys, it's Sesame and EO has officially kidnapped me for this part of the video, but I thought I'd share a fun team with you guys that I like to call Sun Seal Strike, which is a Pokemon reference, but we are talking about Clara for this honorable mention. Clara is literally a powerhouse with the right supports allowing her counterattacks to literally destroy the enemy. Her goal is to get hit as much as possible, which her ultimate helps out with this as it increases her likelihood of getting hit, but another partner that can help with this is Lynx. Lynx is able to put survival response onto Clara, which means Clara's chances of getting hit are even higher now, outside of her ultimate being active as well. March 7th can also increase the likelihood of an ally getting hit, so that's another character to help Clara launch even more follow-up attacks, which is a huge source of her damage output. You can do quite a lot of pairings with Clara supportively. Tingyun is awesome for the energy for more ultimate uptime. Tingyun is also able to buff Clara's damage and attack. Another option that isn't as popular to use on teams in general can be Yukong. Yukong is pretty nice with Clara since she highly buffs Clara's attack, crit rate, and crit damage. And since Clara has low speed, enemies will likely get their turn before her, but Yukong's buff will stay active the entire time while Clara is dealing her follow-up attacks. So this synergy, as a result, can be pretty strong and I'm personally a very big fan of it. When it comes to our standard characters, Clara is definitely one of my favorites, and honestly, who wouldn't want to see a bunch of lasers just literally annihilating the enemy? I know I do, but my time is up. Back to you, EO. Hello Internet! I'm God Douglas bringing you the team I named the Quantum Kneecap Breakers. With this team, you want to make sure you break down kneecaps and render them absolutely dead the moment you break the enemies. This team consists of the Quantum Break duo named Surulf and Shreya Yi. To support them, you have Ronmei and Pella. The trick here is to abuse how defense reduction works with Entanglement. Stack the defense shred with Surulf and Pella on any enemies and break them with either Surulf or Shreya Yi. Entanglement does exceedingly more damage with more defense shreds being stacked which is the main mechanic of the team. They both should be around with high break effects, so it does give you more freedom to break enemies with either or. Don't gotta force yourself to wait for a certain DPS to move, yeah? Ronmei in this team helps you with weakness break efficiency, and she just gives you a lot of buffs anyway, so why not? With the help of Shrey's ult and E2 that helps her ignore the weaknesses of enemies with parts of her kid, Shrey can break enemies incredibly quickly along with Ronmei's support. Top that off with Surwolf's weakness implant and breaking abilities, you get a team that breaks kneecaps pretty quickly. This team actually got buffed as well, with a new watchmaker set too, which is what I've got on my Ronmei right now. The 30% team wide break effect buff synergizes with your team perfectly since most of your team would love to have the break effect buff. The pros of this team is that you can fight most enemies as long as you have a way to break them, whether by planting the quantum windows or breaking them through Shrey's alt or talent. The cons here are that you struggle against enemies that straight up remove their own weakness like the Arumaton Gatekeeper in Sanction Mode or the new MOC11 boss named Sam. You can still fight them, it's just gonna be a bit harder though. Furthermore, this team can be considered a bit 
is slower since the enemies get pushed back from the break and they'd have to take a turn to take damage. But otherwise, you have the quantum kneecap breakers that beats anyone the moment you break them. Okay, now we can talk about my top five best teams in Honkai Star Rail. <laughs> what are you afraid of? Coming in at number five, we have he may hurt you or him hurt you. I like I like him hurt you. It feels feels more appropriate, but that's going to consist of the core between Himiko and Herta. Ideally, you'd want to use May with them because it's going to boost up both of these teammates or both of the members on the team, as well as whatever you decide to do with your fourth slot. The general game plan is well, I, I, honestly, it's really simple. I don't need to spend a lot of time explaining it. Shoot for breaking the boss ASAP with Himiko. Trigger Robot Jones. Herta triggers follow up attacks on the mobs, which then re-triggers Robot Jones. Herta then gets her ultimate, which re-triggers the process, insert Robot Jones, rinse and repeat. So the idea itself is very straightforward, very smooth, but the two of them together, it's an onslaught of damage between follow-up attack to follow-up attack to follow-up attack to ultimate, throw in a skill here or there, you're decreasing the damage. Overall, there's such a buttery smooth combination between Herta and Himiko that this was something we actually saw very early on in Honkai Star Rail's meta development. I don't even know if I want to call it meta development, it was more so the, uh, the farming capability between both of these characters but as time went on we saw less and less fire and ice units that were weak together that could also be taken advantage of between Herta and Himiko. Now with so many extra light cones that both Herta and Himiko could use collectively or I guess separately in this case as well as Ruan Mei boosting up both of them having a teammate like Fushwin to keep them alive and in some cases at least right now you really don't even need a sustained character on this team. You could actually slot that in for someone like Asta, who's now going to help you move faster, or even a Branya if you want to boost them up a little bit further so that Himiko can still use her skill. Maybe even Sparkle coming in the future could change this, but as of right now, Himahurtia is sliding in as number five. This against the demons. With this blade as my core, the inner self is perfect. Next up is our fourth best team, Jing Blade. Now, I know a lot of you know that I love Jing Liu and I do like Blade, so it's crazy to see that Jing Blade is coming in at number four and not number one. And I had a lot of arguments behind whether or not Jing Blade even deserved the fourth spot. They fit all the criteria to the most degree, but some just fit it better. Their core function is dishing out as much damage as possible from two sources of strong DPS units while capitalizing on the wind type coverage that Blade provides. His talent rocks full screen, which in faith helps break down enemies' toughness for Jing Liu to hit even harder. Thanks to the fact that Jing Liu consumes the HP of all her allies during Bankai, Blade's talent will trigger more often than on his own. And eh, finding the speed, tune in for how you want to play it opens up the door for a number of different turns specific strategies that can keep Jing Liu inside or outside of her Bankai for as long as possible. And for those of you that are new here, Bankai, at least when I say it, is referring to Jing Liu's transcendent state because it looks like Bleach. He's voiced by a Bleach character and she reminds me exactly of Unahana. Now the cool thing about this team is that you can use Mei or Branya as the harmony boosting unit since neither of them change the actual team's function and instead change the initiation. Mixing in Blade's favorite healer, Lynx, practically doubles his talent triggers, increasing his damage output, but sometimes you can get away with no sustain at all due to the fact that Jing Liu and him together output so much damage. Without links, I guess you could use Locha or Fu Shuen, even Ho-Oh, and there's really not a drastic difference between the two, but adding links creates a double core or dual core scenario where you now have Jing Liu and Blade working together. You also have Lynx and Blade working together, and then you have Ruan Mei boosting up everyone on the team. I guess that would be a three core piece, right? So it's crazy to think that I wouldn't put them higher on the list. Overall, this team is strong due to the fact that both Blade and Jing Liu are incredible units on their own, and then together, they just dish out even more damage. But still, they're only number four. Hide under. The one wearing the veil. That sparkle. Now, as I previously mentioned, I had to argue between who was going to go in the fourth slot, the third slot, and the second slot. And as of right now, this third slot is kind of crazy to me. I did not expect to put this here, but it is what it is. What I would like to refer to as Quantum Rangers, focusing around hyper buffing the Quantum unit, your DPS of choice, to maximize their damage output. Utilizing Silver Wolf to bring the weakness implant said Quantum on anyone, and you get a gazillion debuffs on top of that. Obviously, Fu Xuan is the Quantum Sustain. Per hyper carry rules, you would have some type of harmony unit boosting them up, that being Ting Yoon, Asta, Branya, Mei, you name it. But in this specific case, Ting Yoon will be preferred over Branya due to the more ultimates, but both of them are going to work with QQ. Unfortunately, QQ is not. <laughs> 
I couldn't hold it in. QQ is not the one that I'm talking about today. While QQ can be slotted 100% in for this team, right? You can totally use QQ on this team. He typically needs to be E6 with some relative luck attached to her build. Now she's definitely up here with Zila. I'm not even arguing that, especially in regards to this hyper carry team. But for the ease of explanation, I'm gonna refer to Zila alone moving forward. Zila or Sele, however you like to pronounce it, her kit naturally buffs herself with a lot of damage percent. She's already strong on her own, but triggering the resurgence state damn near triples that amount of strength. She controls her own speed and owning her signature light cone increases the damage based on her speed even further. Ting Yoon is over Branya here because she gives her the attack percent buff that's needed to maximize on top of Zila's own damage percent buffs. She already gives herself plenty of damage and appreciates the attack percent more in this specific case. Ting Yoon's buff is also multiplied by two because of the resurgence. That includes Ting Yoon's ultimate. And this is just because of the way resurgence works. I'm sure a lot of us know by now how resurgence works. If you do something before slash within resurgence, then it just doesn't count as an actual turn, which means you can hold on to whatever those buffs are for a longer period of time. Now with Zila having an insanely scaled ultimate that only cost 120 20 energy, Ting Yoon's always gonna give her at least half of that, or I guess right up to half of that, doing the 50 to 60 points of energy. Lastly, Ushwin tops this team off by not only keeping everyone alive thanks to damage mitigation, but also increases Zila's damage and crit rate by a usable amount. The last bit of this core comes from Silverwolf, making sure that not a single soul will resist the ridiculous one-shot ultimate technique that Zila is capable of to this day. I guess if we're doing this from a pre 2.1 standpoint or pre 2.0 standpoint, let's imagine Ting Yoon is a mini version of Sparkle in this case, where you are using an SP positive unit in order to capitalize and use Zila's skill as often as possible. But what I really like about this team is the fact that Zila moves so fast on her own, along with the dance, 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 like from Ting Yoon that you're able to weave in basic attacks and skills between Zila to allow her to keep herself at an, an almost SP neutral standpoint. Now when you add in the fact of resurgence, you add in the fact that Ting Yoon is constantly giving you her ultimate and Ting Yoon can also cheat this system by not doing skill basic basic but instead doing skill basic skill she gets her ultimate much faster which then gives Zila the ultimate much faster and it works a little bit better in Branya's case or it works better than Branya's case because of the fact that you're getting this one shot new pretty much every single turn. Honestly, I was going to originally place Mono Quantum as the fourth best team in the game, but after careful consideration on their synergy alone and speaking publicly in my Discord about Team Yoon over Branya, it became way more clear that this team has a lucrative amount of synergy for pushing Zila into resurgence as much as possible. Quantum Rangers rushes in confidently at number three. Why not learn from the pros? One, balancing the books is a moral imperative. Default? And pay double. Coming in hot at number two. And this one, this team right here, guys, number two and number one were so close to me. They're so close to home, but I feel like they are inarguable at this point. We can all agree on this particular slot. Number two could be number one and number one could be number two. It doesn't really matter. It all comes down to personal preference. But as far as right now goes, number two is Dr. Numby. That's gonna consist of Topaz, Dr. Ratio, Ruan Mei, and whatever sustain you want, typically we're looking at Fu Xuan. If for whatever reason you're cracked and you don't need a sustain, go ahead and throw Ost in the mix. Topaz is essential here. E1S1 is golden territory. He's gonna bring proof of dead and the tame state debuff, increasing ratios follow up attack damage by 50%, as well as another 24% crit damage dealt to the enemy. E1 just adds the debtor state on top of that, which stacks on whatever I just told you. May is May, providing an insane buff across the board, which allows the trick of a sub break ratio or topaz so that you can do whatever you want. Ratio giving you a two times delay option thanks to imaginary imprisonment, and then topaz just giving you two times the damage from a break attack by being fire. And if you really don't want to get hit, you could easily slide in Fu Xuan for Locha, doing the same exact thing that I just told you about ratio, but all the way across the board. The reason I picked Fu Xuan on this team, like I said, you could slide in Locha for this case too. Both of them have an AOE full screen, I'm going to entangle you or I'm going to imprison you. Regardless, someone's getting hit. Add that into Ruan May on the team and now you have a super delay. I've talked about just how strong weakness break delays are between these two characters alone in my previous videos. Dr. Nomi's core function is triggering as many follow-up attacks as possible. Ratio plus Topaz follow-up attack equals one full Numbi spin ball. The more they attack, the more spin balls that flash. Some of you might be thinking, eh, well, you know, Dr. Ratio is already one of the strongest DPS characters in the game. Why would I waste my time with Topaz when I could just hyper buff him? And to that I say, Ratio is strong on his own. Yes, 
but needs other debuffs to truly excel. You could use Pela, but she's only beneficially giving 100% after both her and Ratio have used their ultimates. A Silver Wolf is fantastic and gets the job done on her own, but that's just Silver Wolf. Then, while Ratio provides his own debuffs, it's only two, meaning you'll need at least one more for a single target. Like I said before, Topaz gives him just that. The goal of this team isn't just Ratio and debuffs, though. It's taking the most advantage of Numbi needing follow-up attacks, Ratio needing debuffs, and each one of them providing the other that exact skill set, while in turn enhancing the damage for the both of them. Their damage output is so ridiculous, especially with an E1 S1 Topaz in mind, that having two single target DPSs on the team becomes irrelevant because of how fast they melt through HP bars, thus solidifying Dr. Numbi as Star Rail's second best team going into version 2.0 of Honkai Star Rail. Sooner or later, the curtain has to fall. As for the ending, wanna take a guess? Coming in as the number one team in HSR as a version 2.0 pre-Sparkle. A team that I like to call Black Lotus, which formerly was known as Black Kafka, but maybe that was offensive to Kafka, I don't know. Anyhow, this team consists of both Kafka and Swan working off of each other in order to increase their damage outputs respectively. But I guess in Mr. Poke's case, I'd say respectfully. Thanks to Swan's Arcana ability, Kafka always has more than just her shocks to detonate. While those same shocks are sequentially increasing the amount of Arcana stacks Black Swan raises. This core is so strong that it's one of the only teams that can dish out relatively the same potential without Mei on the team by just adding another DOT user who aims for a specific purpose. By this, I mean Luka and Break Effect, Gwenaifen and Break Effect, on top of the burns they get. Sampo and Break Effect with the Windshear, I guess. Strangely enough, I've even gotten away with running a Break Effect Himiko in the final slot to pair up with Mei, but that's only because Himiko has burned in her entire kit, so she still helps Kafka and Swan at the end of the day. And then Locha just doubles down with Mei to delay the enemy so far that my previous theory on achieving 50 Arcana stacks was correct. And that sounds great and all that, but too bad the enemy just dies before it matters anyway. Overall, the synergy between Kafka, Black Swan, and Ruan Mei is so smooth, so powerful, that it literally fits every single criteria that I could think of on what would make a great team in Honkai Star Rail. Outside of Dr. Numbi, there was not a single other team in the game that I could say, you know what? On paper and in practicality, they do everything perfectly. Between the three of them, there is not a single flaw that I could think of. But if you could think of one, let me know in the comments down below. Until then, Black Lotus skates past Dr. Numbi as my number one best team in version 2.0 of Honkai Star Rail. Whew, guys, that's gonna be it for me today. Hopefully you enjoyed me delivering my top five teams in Honkai Star Rail. I tried to get together, like I said, a lot of the criteria that I felt was pretty universal, but still impactful overall with including these teams. And again, as I stated earlier in the video, at least the beginning of the video, this top five teams is probably subjective mostly to myself, but using a lot of the data and information available publicly to the entire game as well as the audience, the community to put all that together. There were a lot of teams that I thought of, but not a lot of them fit in certain scenarios. Some might have had two out of three of the criteria. Some had one out of three. Some of them were super cool, but couldn't clear in three cycles or less. And I felt like it wouldn't have been fair if I had teams that could practically zero cycle using the same criteria versus other teams that couldn't three cycle, but they worked really good together or they had a lot of synergy. You know how much it hurt me to not include my, my Topaz and my Himiko team my Tapu Koko team. And it's not even because they couldn't three cycle. You guys saw me one cycle the last MOC. The only reason that team didn't make it in my top five is because I already had Dr. Numbi in here. Otherwise, I would have put the Tapu Koko team here. Regardless, let me know if you use any of these top five teams or if you plan on building these top five teams. Stick around for another video. I've got one more for you guys where I go over the top 10 characters in Honkai Star Rail. I can't say my usual outro is inappropriate for YouTube. Like the video, comment, subscribe, and follow me on Twitch because I'm trying to hit partner. All that out of the way, smell you later.